Hey everyone, we are once again with freelance conservator Bethany Palumbo. This is her studio in here, but because it's quite small and contained, we've come outside to do a bit of filming. And today, we're going to do some real life conservation work. And I'm going to do some real life conservation work. Yes, you are, Brady. So when we are conserving objects, the first most important thing to do is documentation. It's really important to make a record of what an object looked like before treatment and then after. And if you have a written a piece of documentation too. Any conservators that are working on that piece in the future will know what you did to it and what materials you used. Sort of like with a car when you look through the manual of all exactly. the stuff that's been done to it. Fur and feathers are very good at attracting dust and grime. So cleaning is always the next stage and we'll do uh, dry cleaning which will involve vacuums and makeup sponges which are made of latex and then if the specimen's really grubby we'll clean it as well with solvents afterwards. And you're going to be working on this beautiful yellow-throated toucan. Okay. There you go. Okay. And what you want to do is gently brush in the direction of the feather growth. How softly? You can be quite firm. You don't want to pull out any feathers. No. Okay. Look at Brady doing real conservation work. I'll let you finish this later. <laughs> <laughs> look, I just love like, the look on your face. It's the absolute paranoia that I'm going to damage no, the specimen. Fine. Do you live with this paranoia? I Not anymore, no. When you've handled things like the last dodo head in existence yeah well nothing scares you anymore right okay nothing scares you anymore and what i learned when i was working in america too is that you can always fix it you can always fix it sounds like video editing <gasps> look i've, got, oh, I've done that's well really gross I've yeah done well. good work and then with these tail feathers too i'd give them a clean with 50 50 water and methylated spirit so once cleaning's been undertaken um you need to Assess the specimen to see if it needs any more serious restoration. So this could be to repair broken feet or there could be cracks in the beak. It could even be something as recolouring a specimen if it's faded. Basically, these two toucans, someone has very painstakingly painted the beaks, but they've used acrylic paint applied with a paintbrush and it looks very matte and flat mm. and unrealistic. So yeah. the client requested that we remove that and I replace it with something that looks more realistic. You're right, that beak does look kind of painted. This yellow-throated toucan, so I've already removed the paint that was on this one's beak. Oh, so that one did have one of these paint jobs as had well. Had loads of paint, and actually the paint was concealing lots of cracks underneath. So having removed that, I've been able to consolidate these cracks with an adhesive and make it a bit more structurally sound. Bethany, do you ever have to go to nature books or other sources to find out what these things look like always. in the wild? Always. In the studio, I actually have loads of reference pictures, and you always have to reference from nature, especially I'm not very familiar with toucans. I've not seen them in the wild. So it's really important to have a point of reference to be able to identify the colours. Here is another toucan that I restored. Stored. This was him before restoration, so again... <laughs> no, that's not good. And then that paint was removed and it was replaced with acrylic inks that were airbrushed on. Ah. So it's just much lighter and it just looks a lot more realistic. Nice. So now, Brady, if you'd like to have a turn at removing some paint, are you up for the challenge? I was born ready. <laughs> good. This is our lovely... What oh, do you yeah. call him? Bruce. You're going to have a turn on this guy. Yeah. So what we use to remove acrylic paint is acetone. Now, if you can master the making of a cotton bud, you are a conservator. Making a cotton yeah. bud? Because you don't want to buy them pre-made because it's not good for the environment. Repeat after me. Wow. That's like a magic trick. <laughs> this is not going to go quite so well, I don't reckon. Nice and tight. Use your fingers, tighten it up. It keeps getting stuck in my gloves. That's all right. Okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> Acetone is a solvent that is not good to be inhaled. We're working outside right now, which is fine. But if you're in an, in an inside environment, you do need to be wearing a mask. And then with your acetone, what we're going to do is just start rubbing that away. Yeah, Unfortunately, well. it's acrylic paint, so it comes off really easily. I wonder how much of the pigmentation is going to be left in the beak. There, look, something is being revealed. Do you see that, James? Mm -hmm. I like this little dispenser. Now support the beak from underneath. There you are. They do have this really dark burgundy pigment in life. All right, I'm ready to change my, change my tip. The whole thing in there, ready okay. for this, is I'm magic. Ready. In and out. In and then out. I can't wait for the comment section to be full of all the innuendos. <laughs> That's good. Hang on a second, are you just getting me to do all your work? Basically, yes. 
Oh, because so it starts getting real nice and smushy. Oh yeah, I guess I'm with you. It's almost like it's spelling out something. Yeah. The runes. It's like black under there. Yeah. Ready for another replacement? If you want to keep going, yeah. I want to do a bit more. I wasn't more. expecting you to do the whole thing. No, oh, there we go. This is kind of addictive. It's kind of like solving a puzzle. Well, there's an element of, you know, yeah, being a detective. Yeah. And uncovering, uncovering old restorations is one of my favourite parts of conservation, actually. Yeah. Well, like, I'm dying to see what's under there. You could also, if you don't want to do that bit here, do this bit up here because that may be lighter. Yeah, see? See the paint starting to go away? So this is the yellow throated toucan in life. Oh, OK. So that's what we'll be aiming for. Bit of work to go yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll be finishing this today. No. Here it's really dark, but up here it's lighter. Yeah. But the colour, the original colour is gone. Yeah, so the colour just is one of those things that just fades, especially if they're exposed to light. You satisfied? I'm satisfied. All right. Don't film in here, it's awful, it's messy, horrible. This is where all the secrets are. <laughs> this is where all the conservator secrets are. I think I actually saw the lost ark. Sometimes you come across a specimen that's missing a massive part of its structure. So for example, this pike, when it arrived here at the studio, it was in fact missing its tail. Here's a picture of what it looked like beforehand. To reconstruct this tail, firstly I put down a base of acid-free card and then on top of this, with a combination of this acrylic-based adhesive and Japanese tissue, I basically reconstructed the tail on top of the card. This is Japanese tissue paper, it's made from wood and it's conservation grade because it's acid free, it's not made with any chlorine. It feels a lot like fabric actually more than paper. When it's prepared the fibres are interlaced randomly so yeah. it's really strong when wet and you can use it for a variety of conservation purposes so you could use it uh, to infill gaps in paintings or in this case I used it to reconstruct the ridges on this tail and then I also used it as papier mache to go over the entire surface. You can make it into a paste. Yeah, it's got hundreds of uses in conservation. So that's kind of like conservators WD-40 or gaffer tape or something. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> the gaffer tape of the conservation world. <laughs> <laughs> this acrylic adhesive is really awesome because it is very flexible when dry. Oh yeah. Which is helpful for taxidermy because taxidermy is very susceptible to the environment. It swells and contracts with humidity and temperature. And if you can use materials that will also be able to swell and contract with it, then the repair to the taxidermy won't suffer any damage. This particular adhesive is used in, art, in the art conservation world a lot for the restoration of canvas paintings and decorative objects. And I noticed using it in this way, if I applied pigment to the adhesive when it was wet, then actually it created a better depth of colour. So I applied some orange pigment to that and that's what I used on the tail. So just like multiple layers of paper and adhesive and colour has resulted in this tail looking quite fleshy and realistic. The only step I need to take next is to find a way to make it more transparent. It's almost like you're kind of like uh, surgeons or cosmetic surgeons, aren't you? I'd like you? to think so, yeah. yeah. If I wasn't a conservator, I'd be a plastic surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they make loads of money, right? Well, apparently. I undertook the same process on these very, the tips of these fins that had broken as well. Bethany, is there a branch of conservation that says, don't do this? Don't, like if it's gone, it's gone, don't reconstruct? Is of there... course. It depends on um, many, many factors. So if this piece is going into a museum environment on display, and that's a museum of science and education, it's really important that the specimens on display replicate those in nature. Also, it's really important for any restoration to be completely reversible. So if in the future, researchers want to use this specimen for something they can easily remove all of this and they know that all of the skin underneath is still going to be in really good condition and it wouldn't have been affected by the materials that you used. And you said at the start you always associate documents and keep records too so yep. they would be able to look up and say oh in 2020 Bethany the conservator put this fake tail on so they'd yep. know. How did I do by the way? <laughs> like, you know, Bearing in mind it was my first time. I was quite impressed. Yeah? Yeah, good work Brady. All right. Not good enough to get a job in the, in the real studio in there though. Not yet, Gotta in get time. My, I've still got the training wheels. You have a plate of zinc in the middle and if you put some mild acid in there, some sulfuric acid, you begin to get a wet battery. It will generate a little bit of current for you. And you can see the plate is connected on the outside to a couple of wires which have been soldered onto the stem here and there are a couple of borax beads which just keep the two wires apart. So Keith, what's the point of this? It's almost like a scientific toy. This was something you could put in your pocket just as a demonstration piece.